Hey, so welcome back guys to my Docker Throw series. This is the video number 10 and in the previous video we talked about um, Nginx as a reverse proxy and some load balancing stuff. So just to revise you a bit on the previous context, uh, it's like this was our architecture. I just redrawn it in trial.io. You guys must use that free tool. It's amazing. Anyway, so this is our current architecture and yeah, we haven't replicated our backends, but just imagine just I want to build the image in your head that it's this is this that's where the case is where these things could be very useful. So we have our front end, okay? So our front end is this is a React app, and we have a reverse proxy Nginx that we set up in the previous server, and that was reverse proxying us to the backend. And yeah, so the idea is that since we are requesting our backends from our proxy, so we have a middle layer, and that middle layer is extremely powerful for us in many senses because it provides us an abstraction towards our backend. So let's say we want to, our server is down and we can cache our stuff on the Rust proxy. So instead of going to the server, let's say the server is failing or th there are some constant thing that's uh, just gonna be requested and not gonna be updated for a long time. So why would you go to a backend and then open your database connection and then you would go come back and with a response? And that's gonna take a lot of time, right? So how about we cache our content on the reverse proxy in the middle layer? And that would be just amazing. This can give you, like for me in my professional job, it give me a lot of a lot of optimization for about. 10 to 20 times to be honest because my database calls were really complex and there were some things which were just being calculated but they were never really updated that much so huge chunks of data were just coming from cached content and that's the huge power of nginx so uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, tell you uh, pragmatically how it's going to be done so just a bit of a reminder of our project yeah Frontend and the next, keep that image in mind, and that's where we're gonna cast. So let me show you the uh, front end. I think front end is not that important for us. So if we look at our token post file, we have three microservices. One is the back end, and other one is the database, and one is our front end, right? So uh, <clears throat> let's say uh, in our front end file. So uh, as you guys remember, we implemented our uh, reverse proxy in this nginx configuration so on port 80 we are serving react app and on 9090 we are uh, using this as a reverse proxy to call our backends our backends are running on port 4008 as you could see here yeah so uh, what I'm going to do, I've done something already for the sake of the tutorial. So just to, ex uh, just to show you this, guys, uh, in a more practical way. So I've implemented something already on my backend. So I've implemented or changed my route to re return the current server time from the backend. So right now I think it's running. Yeah, it's running. So uh, if I show you localhost 408, so... I hit enter, shows me the current time, right? So if we claim that our content is cached, it should return the older time unless it tells, te unless we tell it to invalidate the cache, right? So let's go ahead with that. So the first thing that I would like to do, of course, we would like to configure our Nginx to have content caching. So uh, there are some really great directives that uh, Nginx provides for that. So Let's go ahead to first open up our content caching that we're going to plan. So that's our Nginx as a reverse proxy, right? So before that, we want to define, we want to start by defining a proxy cache path. And yeah, so you can choose anything inside a Docker container or any Linux-based ideology in your mind. This could be war slash Nginx cache, temp cache, whatever, but temp cache is a bit dangerous because it can get flashed down. But we would stick with EDC slash Nginx cache. And if it doesn't exist for you, the Nginx is intelligent enough to create it for you. So the first thing we give 
we want to set up our cache path like where are we going to uh, store this cache what disks it is going to use what path is it on and how much space we want to give to it so okay so that's the path so first i say keys zone my cache I will explain in a second what this means. 10m. Okay, so this is guys basically this is a key zone defines for us. So it's like a zone that this is the kind of cache that I'm gonna make. Let's say you have another zone that your app is hosted on, you could have another cache serving a different purpose or serving a different set of routes for you. For that, this is a very basic example. So we just defined one key zone and on a single level, this is gonna be around 10 MB of cash, okay? So then uh, we go ahead and we say the maximum size that it's gonna have is going to be, this could be anything, like this could be one gigabyte, 500 gigabyte, but that's impractical. So we would take around 100 megabytes, right? For the sake of this tutorial. And then we can say, uh, sorry, not MB, it's M. And then we say inactive and that's 60 m yeah so it means that if the cache is inactive for 60 minutes and the cache is not being accessed uh, or not being hit for a while then just remove it this could be 10 minutes whatever you like so then you have uh, pretty much done yeah so use temp path oath is just that uh, whenever you are creating a normal internet server, it's also ca always cached into a temporary path. And yeah, we don't want that. We don't. We want a proper path where our cache is persistent and it just only goes unless the 60 minutes are off, right? And it's inactive too. Or unless we purge our cache or we invalidate it ourselves. So, right, so we are pretty much set up with the paths. So yeah, now we want to get to the real stuff on the proxy path. So if you remember, this was our proxy path, that's our backend URL. So anywhere in this location tag, I can say, okay, which proxy cache my cache, right? So yeah, see, that makes sense now. And then I'm going to say proxy cache valid 200 or this 200 is by the HTTP status code though. So we say 210 minutes, got it, right. Okie dokie. So let's say uh, what this line means that it's a proxy cache, if the response that we receive from the server is 200, then cache it for 10 minutes. This could go, this is a time variable, so this could go any, any much as you want. Right, so let's say you have uh, another status code that you want to cache, could be anything, but it doesn't make sense. But let's say if you want to have all status codes, re response codes returned from the server being cached as responses, then you could say any here too, and that would be pretty fine. And then you could say if it's not very, um, it's not very, a route that's not easily or frequently updated for you so you could just say uh, one day here but I wouldn't so I would just go with a more practical approach or let's just make it uh, 30 seconds just to exhibit what happens after the cache crashes right and then we go ahead we want to now define our uh, methods that we want to cache on so by default this is get method and head method and but some people even want a post method. So yeah, we're just gonna have it there for you to know. And then we have proxy cache minimum uses. And yeah, this just directive as the name uh, suggests, like uh, it's you have to explain the number of times this route is accessed to cache it. So I will just say one every time cache it because I wanna see a more a practical approach right now and then lastly and the most uh, great one of the best features I like about this is this use stale directive so what it, this is basically a fault tolerance mechanism so let's say your backend is down 
So you can say, okay, yo, my backend is down. So Nginx got it there for you. It's not going to tell the users all oh, internal server ever, whatever shit. So it's going to serve the cache content to them until your backend is back up. And you have, it gives you some grace period, some time to uh, wash up on that. And yeah. So these are all the status codes that I would like to define. Uh, that's um, okay. So these are the status codes that if they occur, then it's going to just serve you with the stale content, right? So there we are pretty much done with our cache. And guys, don't forget that this, this directive is quite important. And yeah, the proxy cache wallet, because if you don't do that, sometimes the Nginx is going to remove the cache before you even see it. <laughs> it's like less than one second or whatever. So <clears throat> yeah, let's just try to... Uh, stop our Docker project and let's just run it to see <clears throat> if it even helped us or not. Do, do, do. Yeah, so we will just do Docker Compose down just for a bit quick stuff. And I think I haven't built other parts. Uh, yeah, this was my front end container, so I will just remove it first. Okay, Docker Compose up. Now this this should turn our proxy up successfully, or we might have some errors in it. Let's see. Oh fuck, we messed up. Okay. Okay, so we messed up with some sort of. Okay, guys, sorry, that's my bad. Oh. Crap. that and then you go up again and we expect so uh, sorry guys I had to cut through the video uh, there was a small problem with the build so now it's built well and there was just a small syntax problem when was that I was um, there was a missing semicolon <laughs> at the cruel semicolons as always thanks to Python they're gone and in proxy cache, my cache, so there was this stale. I was using state instead of stale, so that was the other problem in the code. And now it's pretty much built. So let's head to our browser and first see this working example, right? So let's see. So first, this is our backend URL. So this should always, in every single case, give us the updated time, our updated service time. Perfect. So another hit updated time coming up now this is the reverse proxy so the idea is if I hit it once then it should not it should return me a response then next time it should re return me the same time because it's the cache response right so 24 and we should get 24 again and it should be our successful mission and we do that's perfect so yeah our and then access caching pretty well. And you can, of course, modify these attributes and you can go to docs.nginx. It's really great documentation provided for this. And I really love Nginx for their good documentations. Anyway, so now for a more practical point of view that I would like to present to you guys, I would like to go inside this um, uh, container basically to show that the cache is being saved actually on disk. So yeah, this is making it a bit bigger. So it's visible. Anyway, Docker container PS. So it's our first container ID. So yeah. So if you want to go inside a container ever on PowerShell, you can do bin slash sh and yep, you're in. So if we do ls, so remember our directory there we pushed the cache was etc slash nginx slash cache. So I would go to etc slash nginx slash cache. Okay, so we should see some values here, right? Perfect, guys. So that's your, basically, the values that you're getting. And that's where your cache is being stored. So 
that's where what we configured down here, right? So even if you want to see a difference, you can see it through Docker's diff command. As far as I remember, that was the command. I hope I am not so wrong about that. Perfect, yeah, right? So we can see that these are the re recently changed file system paths in the in our container. And that's pretty cool, right? So yeah, thanks guys for watching. This was our Nginx content caching tutorial. And this can be extremely helpful if you have a high user base. And yeah, Nginx is open source and it's free. So these guys are just amazing. And yeah. We are able to cast things pretty well and in my practical experience I've been able to gain a lot of good stuff. So yeah, we have some more videos coming up. Thanks for watching and catch up with you guys soon in the next video. Thank you.